It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Larry Lasseur from the CBS television news staff and Francis W. Carpenter of the Associated Press. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Sir Percy Spender, ambassador from Australia to the United States. Well, it's always a pleasure to welcome back an old friend. Our guest tonight is not only an old friend of the Chronoscope program, he's a tried and true friend of our country. Whenever we're in trouble, diplomatically speaking, we can always count on our friend from Australia to pitch in when the going gets rough. So, Percy, I'd like to ask you something about the recent conference in Manila. Did we actually get what we wanted out of that recent Southeast Asian pact? It depends upon what you mean uh, and what you wanted. I think that there was a, a very substantial meetings of meeting of minds and having regard to the difficulties which we're confronted with, I think was a very successful result. Well, is this treaty any good, actually, if India and the other, some other Southeast Asian nations stay out of it? Well, certainly we wouldn't have participated in it if we hadn't thought it was good. You must make a start somewhere. We know that other countries uh, have different views to our own. Uh, we understand the reasons why they differ, but uh, it was Australia's view that we should go ahead, and we did go ahead. Well, do you think the, uh, the communism threat in Southeast Asia is the next big threat? Is that where the, the next uh, pitch is to come from Moscow? I, I can't say with any, uh, any degree of certainty where the next uh, pressure will be applied. One knows very well it's always applied where the weakness is. Mm. My feeling is, and has been for some time past, that uh, uh, trouble will always occur in that part of the world if any further trouble does occur. Well, Sir Percy, a lot of people over in this country think uh, correctly or incorrectly that the United States is again holding the bag, if I may say so, on the Southeast Asian Defense Alliance, and that we are committed to fight in defense of certain countries, but uh, they are not committed to fight unless they find that the action is in their self-interest. Now, is that true? I don't think it is at all, uh, Mr. Lasseur. Uh, after all, uh, under the terms of the treaty, we all enter into the exactly the same obligation. Uh, the degree uh, of that obligation in terms of burden, of course, varies with countries depending upon their military strength, their economic strength, and their interest. Uh, after all, it is quite clear that, uh, that this country, with uh, uh, its uh, greater economic and military strength, will uh, carry the, the major portion of the burden of maintaining peace in, uh, in that part of the world. But you will not find our own country uh, lacking in its desire to work uh, at all times in carrying out to the full the obligations we've entered into. Well, so, Percy, uh, while we're talking about <coughs> communist dangers and threats, uh, what is the situation with the Communist Party in your own Australia? Well, I suppose it's precisely the same as it is in most democratic countries. There has been a Communist Party in our country. There have been more than one attempt to, to deal with it by legislation. Uh, but the most effective means which so far have been found to deal with it are first by uh, the work of unionists themselves inside their union and secondly by what uh, is called in our country the secret ballot for the election of union leaders. And so that uh, where the secret ballot applies, communist leaders are not, not able to engage in their usual tactics of rigging the ballot. I think you got a lot of applause from Americans by the firm way that your government handled that Petrov case down there, don't you Larry? That Yes, the, the man who deserted asylum. from communism. Have the Russians reacted at all to your uh, very stern action in connection with this man by well, giving him sanctuary? The only, uh, the only result is well known to the world that I'm able to speak about, uh, namely that uh, they, withdrew their, uh, they withdrew their embassy uh, representatives from Australia, and uh, we, as a result, did likewise. So you have no relations with the uh, Soviet Union now? Well, I understand, I understand the in strict, uh, uh, in strict um, uh, protocol, uh, the uh, relations are not broken off, but... Uh, well they just don't exist. They don't <laughs> exist, that's all. <laughs> so, Percy, what about the situation in Japan? Uh, now, the Russians are trying to draw Japan into their trade orbit. Would you consider that a dangerous situation for your country and for mine? I do not doubt whatever that um, the prime aim of uh, Russia in relation to Japan is at least the neutralization of Japan, but over and above that, 
Its purpose is to seek by whatever means are open to it, by blandishment, by pressure, by, in, by, in, by internal operations, to uh, bring Japan into the orbit of the Soviet uh, and communist influence. After all, Stalin said uh, a long time ago that uh, if uh, that could be accomplished, uh, and the belief of the Soviet was that, uh, that uh, the world, uh, the, the communist world would be invincible. And so that any attempt uh, by, by Russia or by the communists uh, to attract Japan into, uh, into its orbit uh, is one which uh, causes concern not only to us, but to all the free world, whose purpose it ought to be to do whatever it can uh, to enable uh, Japan to develop and be maintained as a democratic country. Well, Sir Percy, uh, does Australia fear most the spread of communism or is it afraid of a revivified aggression by Japan? Last at all times, uh, we uh, have been, uh, been wary of accepting the proposition that the roots of democracy have gone down deep into the uh, Japanese way of life. It's a very proper observation to make that we see the immediate problem in the foreseeable future as that of communist aggression. What do you think about the <coughs> rearmament of Germany? Is that bothering uh, Australians very much? Or? Oh, indeed it is, because uh, after all, in two world wars, uh, we, have, uh, we have come into, uh, into a state of war and we've mm -hmm. sent our troops overseas as a result of incidents which took place a long way from our shores in Europe. And so whatever takes place in Europe is of consequence to us. We believe in very firmly that you cannot deal with segments of the world except in terms of seeing the whole problem globally. Well, Sir Percy, I'd like to uh, turn to a place that's a little nearer to your uh, country than uh, Europe, and that's Korea. Are you withdrawing your troops from Korea the way the, we have and the British have, at least a portion of them? There, there have been already. It was announced only in the last two or three days. Uh, these matters were all discussed, of course, between the, the different nations, and uh, we have, the same as you, withdrawn some of our troops. Do you think that will create a vacuum that will tempt the communists to try to come back down again? I don't think so. You think they'll observe the armistice? I do not think that we're, uh, this is my own judgment, I yeah. do not think we're likely to meet in Korea in the foreseeable future any resumption of overt aggression. I see. So Percy, we're going to see you sitting at the chair of Australia in the coming uh, General Assembly of the United Nations opening next week. And there's going to be a lot of interesting questions there. And one that everyone in the United States is interested in is the admission of Red China. Do you think it's going to give us trouble at this coming session? I don't think any more than in the past. What do you think will happen to it? Postpone it again? Uh, I would think that uh, there isn't any uh, real danger of communist China being admitted into the United Nations at this session. Shall we say in the foreseeable future? Is that a phrase that's bandied about, I think? Uh, well, true it is, but of course uh, it's, uh, it's banded around like so many other phrases, but none of us can see any more than uh, a certain, uh, a certain uh, part of the future, mm -hmm. and uh, there is nothing in, uh, permanent uh, in life in respect of anything. One of the interesting questions that's going to come up there, Sir Percy, is the desire of Greece to incorporate Cyprus within its empire. Now, may I ask you, are all the dominions going to back the position of Great Britain and its reluctance to turn over the island of Cyprus to the Greeks? Uh, I will do no more than say that uh, this is, of course, a matter primarily in which Great Britain is interested. But we, too, have our interests uh, for many other reasons, uh, quite apart from our very close association with Great Britain. Well, you've got another case that's closer home. You've got the Indonesians wanting to take over West New Guinea. That's right. And what are your views on that? Well, our views have been expressed more than once. We say, in the first place, that it isn't a matter which is uh, one which ought to be brought into the United Nations for, uh, at all. And secondly, when the uh, issue is examined, there isn't the slightest merit in the claim of Indonesia that they're making. The, these people of West New Guinea are quite different people altogether. Now, I've never, for my part, been able to understand by what justification under the Charter or otherwise you can hand over, either, uh, either by this or that means, uh, one and a half million people who are different people altogether without asking them what they think. We don't hand over people these days, I hope, to anyone. Yeah. So, Percy, I've heard it said in this country that uh, Britain exercises a veto over the actions of the United States, and in turn, India exercises a veto over the actions of Great Britain. Now, how accurate would you say that uh, theory is? Well, if I may use Mr. Carpenter's phrase, that's a, that's a slogan which is bandied about a bit too, <laughs> you know. Uh, 
it's quite clear that uh, no nation, uh, if it wants to uh, uh, pursue a course of conduct uh, which uh, is irrespective of what other nations think, is limited by any veto. A nation, if it wants to, can say, we'll do this irrespective of what other people think. But in these days, in the world in which we live, uh, it's a very wise policy to have regard to the views of other nations. Not to condition precisely what the policy of a nation should be, uh, but to have regard to it in determining that policy. And it's quite impossible to determine policy without having regard to the views of other peoples of the world. Uh, so, Sir Percy, uh, President Eisenhower's uh, proposal for a peacetime atomic pool seems to be coming along all right. Uh, Australia's in on that, isn't it? Yes, we indicated our acceptance of the, the, of the proposal right from the beginning. Good. Sir Percy, it's almost a year since you've been on this program. I'd like to ask, you do you feel that the alliance of the free nations is as strong as it was during the Korean War, or are the seams showing just a little bit? Well, I don't doubt, Mr. Bissot, that uh, in the last 12 months uh, there has been a substantial shift in the balance of power throughout the world. Uh, behind uh, the United Nations, of course, this struggle for power goes on, uh, primarily because of the aggressive uh, uh, policy of uh, Soviet Russia and, uh, and of Communist China. And uh, that uh, change in the uh, balance of power is primarily due uh, uh, to the successes the Communists have had, particularly in Indochina, and to their psychological successes, for example, in preventing uh, by, uh, well, bringing about uh, indirectly uh, the collapse of EDC, and by the progress which they have made in atomic and hydrogen weapons. And in, in the result, of course, has been a change in the balance of power. I don't mean by that that, they have the, that they've achieved the balance of power, but there has been a change in it, and therefore renders uh, the, uh, the problem which confronts the, the free world of greater urgency. Well, thank you very much, Sir Percy. It's always a pleasure to hear from our friends from Australia. Very glad to be here. Very glad to be here. The opinions expressed on the Longines Chronoscope were those of the speakers. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lesseur and Francis W. Carpenter. Our distinguished guest was Sir Percy Spender, ambassador from Australia to the United States. The official watch for the World Heavyweight Boxing Championship between Rocky Marciano and Ezra Charles is Longines, the world's most honored watch. In the world of sport, the fact is that Longines watches are official for timing world championships in all sports and contest associations the world over, including the contest board of the American Automobile Association, the National Aeronautic Association, the American Powerboat Association, and many, many others. Now, why is this so? The answer is Longines' great accuracy and complete dependability. The fact is that in some 75 years of accuracy competitions at government observatories, Longines watches have consistently maintained a place of honor, established many records, won countless prizes and awards. These are but some of the reasons why Longines is deservedly known as the world's most honored watch, the watch of highest prestige among the finest watches of the world and why discriminating people in 100 countries have found the name Longines, the first word in buying a watch, the last word in satisfaction. And yet you may buy and own or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as 7150. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem. Agency for Longines Whitnor watches.